I'm going to show you how to model this cool Scilab desk. All right, so uh, I'm in Blender 2.79. I'm just going to switch over to Cycles. I'm going to change my lamp to the sun. Set the strength to 0.3. Use nodes. Set the strength to 3. I didn't say strength there. I meant size. i take the lamp and the camera and move it to layer 2. I'm going to delete the cube and turn on my screencast keys. Okay, look from the top view down. And I'm going to go Shift A, add a circle. I'm going to use six vertices. And uh, I want to be looking top down. I'm going to take this final point back here and I'm going to delete it. Shift and click there. E, S, X, pull them in a bit and pull them back a bit. I think I'll take this one, pull it in, take the whole thing, and I'm gonna scale in the X. So adjust it to whatever shape you want. Okay. From the front view, I'm going to hit E to extrude, and I'm gonna pull it up, give it a good amount of height. All right, if you get discolored polys, just select the whole thing and flip them, Control N in 2.79. Okay, with it all selected then, I'm going to hit E and Alt S, and I'm gonna pull out. That'll give it some thickness, so think about how thick you want your desk. And we're going to delete all these faces on the top and on the bottom. We're not going to need those. X faces. Okay, now on edge selection, we're going to select all these edges. So I'm holding shift, and I'm just going around to get all these. Again, I said faces, and I meant edges. I keep thinking that you're watching Harry grow in the background. I don't know if you can see him there, but every time I do a video, he's getting bigger and bigger. All right, with all those selected, I'm gonna, we're gonna bevel, control B, pull back, give it some space and put one, two segments there, just like that. Shift Alt and click the top edge, Shift D to copy it, P to break it out, select it and set origin to geometry. So we have that there. We're going to go into edit mode, select it, and we're just going to make one big face, F. E to extrude, pull it up, give it a bit of thickness. And um, for this, I think we'll take the top and the bottom and we'll bevel a little bit. Control B, just pull just a little bit and put one segment in there. And hopefully that's going to be enough. If I hit smoothing, what I might do is... Um, we might, let's try this, hit that, hit inset once. Is that sharp enough? That won't, let's see. I might want to put another edge loop up here, nice and tight, and another one, try that. I think I'm okay with that. So I'm gonna take this, shift D, I'm gonna bring it down, there. This one we can do smoothing, but we're not going to worry about that right yet. All right, so we got that going on. Okay, so let's take this Shift D, let's copy it and bring it up. And let's just scale it S Z. Make it nice and thin for the top layer. Now, if I look from the front view, I see it's facing backwards, so I'm going to go R Z 180. Okay, let's go get a sense of the height. Okay. We're going to put some supports in here. So let's go into edit mode and select maybe that edge right here. And bring it close to where we want it. Shift S, cursor to select it. Bring the 3D cursor there. Shift A, bring in a circle. Let's go for 20 vertices. In edit mode, scale it down. Bring it down. Okay, and I'll bring it in a little bit, and I'll start working on that. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to hit, uh, where am I, yeah, E to extrude, bring it up, E and S, scale it in nice and small, E, and bring it up. 
Let's now deselect that in and select that one and control B, pull it down. One, two, roll my mouse up to smooth it like that. Go ahead smoothing and we'll see what we're, we're gonna need. We're gonna need an edge loop down there. That'll probably do it. Okay, I'll go back into edit mode, select it all, and look from the side, pull it down a bit, and then I'm gonna shift D, rotate Y 180 to copy it. I'm gonna bring it up. I think I'll bring it up right till it makes contact there. And then I'm gonna shift alt and click that edge and that edge and control E bridge edge loops and I'm gonna choose merge and I'm gonna X dissolve that edge. It should be good enough. Just the position now. So I'll go from top view and look in wireframe and I'll set the origin of geometry and that's okay. So shift D, I'm just gonna copy one over there. I'm not gonna mirror it, I'm just gonna copy it. Okay. Alrighty, that's our basic desk right there. Now, we're gonna do the lines and the, the handles and the text, and we're gonna use displacement maps. It's gonna take a little bit of work to get in, in the right position. It's not hard, but it's, it can be a little frustrating with this shape. So I don't need to mark any seams. I'm not gonna put on smoothing or anything. I'm gonna go into edit mode and turn to face selection. I'm gonna split my screen in half, T and T, and I'm gonna switch this over to the UV image editor. Sometimes you have to decide what the best thing you wanna do. I am going to, um, I'm going to shift alt and click here and make sure that uh, one of these front ones I find is best is the active one. You'll see the crosshatch pattern, if that's what you call that. All right, it doesn't matter what orientation you're looking for this. I'm gonna hit U for the UV mapping and I'm gonna choose follow active quads. And I think I'm gonna try length average and just hit okay. And it's gonna make a huge thing here. Okay, we're gonna hit S to scale. And I'm gonna rotate 90 minus. I believe I'm gonna to have to go in that orientation. And then I'm gonna just start hitting S and I'm gonna scale it in. S and scale it in. Hit the period key once in a while, see where I'm at. S and scale it in. We're getting close, S and scale it in. All right, and I'm G, I'm gonna just gonna bring it up. And then I'm gonna um, scale this in the Y. Like that. Uh, oops, let's, let's scale in general. That's fine. You can scale out like that. S Y. And I'm going to try to sort of make these like a square. Okay. Now I'm going to come down to here and I'm going to click right there. Keep UV in edit mode, mesh selection in sync. On um, face selection, I'm going to select that face and I see. Okay. So these are the middle lines right there. So if I select that one, I get that one. This one. I get this one. Ah, okay, so the middle is right here, right? That one and that one. Let's keep that in mind. Okay, that makes sense. So this one is over there. This one is over there. This one is there. And this one is there. Okay? So, so far so good. Um, doesn't fill up the whole space, but that's okay. Select them in the UV window. And I'm going to go UVs. Export UV layout. And we are going to put these somewhere in here, in this video. Okay, I called it part one. I'm going to end up doing the whole thing right here. So let's give it a name with a UV on it so you can find it. Okay, so um, we're going to do some drawing. And you can do this all in GIMP or Photoshop. I'm going to use a combination of Flash and GIMP. But you could just use Photoshop or GIMP. But I just have a tendency to be able to draw better here. All right, so gives you an idea of what we're going to be doing. Yeah, get rid of all this stuff. All right, so I'm going to start a new file in Flash. And I'm going to set it to 1024 by 1024. And that's the default size uh, that the UV comes in at. Unless you use a bigger one. It might even be too big, but I'm going to do that. I'll go down to a smaller size here. And then I'm going to import that uh, UV. Okay, so there it is right down uh, near the bottom. And it's all centered on my screen. So lock that up. Hit a new layer. And I'm going to go switch up to a higher view. So 
And I can probably go higher than that even. Let's try 65. And let's try 80. All right, good enough. What I want to do now is I want to draw a line straight through. I'm using the smallest line I can in Flash. And I'm not use guides or anything, we're just roughly getting it. This is going to be the middle line that's going to run all throughout the entire model. Okay. So I'm going to do that. And if we want, we can already check that out. So I'm going to delete the UVs. I've got just a line there. I'm going to file, export image. And I'm going to call this side desk lab video uh, lines. And export the whole thing. I'm going to come over to GIMP. And I'm going to open that. Now. You could have just drawn this and get brought in your UVs and done it. Um, I just like drawing in Flash. I'm going to click here to add a new layer. I'm going to fill it with a mid gray color. That's my foreground. And I'm going to move that layer below. So I've got this transparent line and that file. And I'm just going to overwrite that. So that's what I've got. I've got a line. Okay, let's switch over to the node editor now. And I'm gonna, I can go back into object mode and make sure that I've got my uh, layers with my light on it. I don't really need a camera, but let's look at, you know, light. Yeah. Let's do something about this. Um, let's see. I'll put it there. We'll try that. Okay, that's good enough to be able to see what I want to see. I think I can now go ahead and turn on smoothing for that. Turn that off. Okay, so there's my object. Okay, with that part selected, all right, I'm going to click new to create a new layer or a new material. Sorry about that. Shift S, I'm going to switch that to the principal shader. And I'm going to copy that down here and shift S. We're going to change this to an image texture. And we're going to choose non color data. And the image we're going to use is the line that we just made. So it's not a desk video, lines. I'm going to do that. Don't see anything yet. We will soon. Shift D, -E, shift S, converter, color ramp. I'm going to click connect color back and connect that to displacement start to see something you can add, you can go control T if you want to add the mapping uh, nodes as well all right now with that line there we can start to adjust these values here on the color ramp and this is what I'm going to want to do I'm going to grab this one I'm going to pull it in and I grab this one and I'm going to pull that in very nice and close I want a soft soft kind of line so I'm going to actually switch this to a light color starts to look like that okay so far so good um, the line looks good it goes all the way through okay and we can adjust the, th the thickness and, and various parameters well, well we may have to do some of that let's just go back to flash this layer is going to be my lines so I'm going to just lock that layer <clears throat> create a new layer and bring that UV ba uh, back in I just have it in my library all right, I'm just going to do some more work with it now. Lock that up. I'm going to go to another layer, actually. And um, we can see our lines there. And this is the center right here. And so I want to do now is I want to create lines on, on the opposite sides of the center. If that made any sense. Okay, so there's our center. Let's see if we can go up to 100. Okay, I'm going to take my line tool. I mean, you can go up to as high as you want, I guess. I'll zoom in. As long as you remember where the center is, I believe that's the center. So I'm going to bring a line, uh, yep, yeah, there it is, uh, straight down here. And make sure that it snaps to there. And I'm not doing this exactly, so I'm just going to copy it over and just sort of, you know, by eye, do that. 
all right now in flash you can't just hide a layer and export like i believe you can in photoshop it'll actually uh, render it all out so i can check those out i can do that get rid of that and file export image and i go right over this one that we did in gimp again you can do this all in gimp if you prefer but i come back to gimp close that reopen it open recent lines put my layer in medium grain foreground drop it down file export right to there come back and let's have a look now here's where things can get a little interesting what you'll notice is the thickness or the width of this line is a bit different than the height of this line and that's all about i guess the uv um, stretching and stuff now if that's okay with you that's fine if you needed to you could go into the uvs let's go in here and then you can start trying to play around with with this um if i start scaling this and then i probably gotta import it again or not uh, we can just go back and forth let's try um Press X and let's try pulling in. Okay, it looks like they're getting wider and separating out. So let's go like this. Pull out. Let's say we were satisfied with that. Okay. If we're satisfied with that, all right, then let's just export this again. All right, let's go back to here. This is the UVs. I'm back to Flash now. And I've got lines. I've got these, we'll call these lines again. More lines, the vertical and horizontal. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna bring in the UV again, all over again. I'm not just gonna take it from the library. There it is. It'll tell me I have one already, but I'll just drop it in. And I'll make sure it's centered up. And we'll just have a look at this okay so not much has changed really I've got my horizontal line and my two verticals okay now so i got those i want another one here but i want ones close very close to the uh the curve which is right here so i'm going to come up to i believe it's these ones and i'm going to copy this one pretty close and i'm going to copy it again pretty close to there all right and I think I'll take this one I'll copy it over and bring it down uh, let's see where do we want this one kind of I don't know two-thirds over why do I keep doing that I don't know we could go we could go somewhere like that I just want to make sure it snaps so I'm going to copy that and bring it over. And again, you just go back to your drawing software and just readjust this. I just happen to be, I think, a little bit better in Flash than GIMP. So let's say we had that. Let's try that. I'm going to delete the UVs for now. Export this once again. It's all the same steps. Back over on GIMP. And if you started in GIMP, you stay in GIMP. Okay. So maybe you drew that there. And maybe you're already drawing it with the gray background so you can see that would work just fine. Over right, let's have a look. Cross your fingers. Okay, this is a little close. Okay, let's go into the node editor and see if we like this. So just have a look here. You can see as you slide this along, it'll change how your lines look. If you go too far, they disappear. So maybe you want just very faint. Maybe you like that. And you can bring this in tight. Now the preview doesn't look all that good. So we could. Uh, we have a camera, right? Yeah, we have a camera. Okay. Let's uh, lock camera to view. And uh, set up like sort of a bit of a shot, so just, just so we can see this a little bit better. This is got more 
the shadow on this. There we go. Depending on the position of your lighting, this will influence how your lines look. They're looking a little thick to me, to be quite honest. We may have to do some, some work on that. Um, because this is not real geometry. It's kind of like bump map type stuff. Okay. But just to, just to see it a little bit nicer, uh, let's go to the camera. Let's make this 65. Let's see here, 65, 86. Okay, well, okay. And let's set the sampling at, say, just 200. And uh, let's set the film to transparent. And denoising, again, this is 2.79 features. Uh, you know, it's a little bit more advanced in um, 2.8. Um, also, let's... Uh, up here and give this just a general base like a slightly bluish sciency kind of color okay just 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 for now all right let's see that 12 you, you're gonna need to play with that color ramp until you get the the line that you like i don't really like that angle there and and, and the sun no so i don't like that so sorry let's see at this I think you know these lines aren't as defined as I'd like them so I think I'm gonna stop that and go back to um, the node editor here in preview mode I think I'm sliding this back I think I prefer them anyhow around this position uh, we can give it a try so it's a lot of rendering and redrawing things and moving things around but in the end it, it hopefully will look will look nice look at this stuff and decide if this looks sharp enough to you if we need to uh, move some edges around and maybe we need to move this down I'm not sure if it's making proper contact Okay, let's say I'm I'm reasonably happy with my lines. Okay, I'll come out of there. All right. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to come over to Flash again, or GIMP, whatever it may be, and I can now load the UVs back on. Okay, I want to make a little handle in here, so I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to use the rectangle just with black okay that's important and I'm gonna start by just putting down a rectangle here like that copy it over here approximately the same well you know what I think I'm going around central in this region here and a similar distance to this line if possible We'll take one of these, bring it down, put it kind of in the middle of these guys. Okay, this is a test. We can come back and we can adjust this in a bit. Doesn't really look like it's in the center of this if this was a drawer. I'm not sure that's important. Let's think about this for a minute though. Let's let's have it a bit more central. You know, look exactly like my other diagram, my other my other render, whatever. You can be as exact as you want. You can put guides down. All right, let's go for that. No, oh, don't have anything to save. Never mind. Anyhow. Overwrite what you had before. And as we can easily just make some changes not bad actually not too bad okay so I'm still not crazy about the lines but in, in in actual fact that's not bad at all I'm gonna click render from there 
It'll look a little bit nicer. All right, we'll just we'll just leave it there and we'll move on. You get the idea. At least you get the idea. Now, I think I'll leave those guys there. Okie dokie. What do we got left to do? Okay. So we got the lines. We know we can manipulate those. We can change the size of these. You know, just go back. Go. I need longer or thicker, whatever. Okay. Or the position. I don't like the position. Okay. We're going to do the text. Now, the way we're going to handle this is let's, let's go to one layer. And actually, before we even do any of that, let's grab all this stuff here. Let's make sure that it's on. I feel like it wasn't on before. I want my text right here. All right somewhere on there and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to the uv image editor get rid of the render and i've still got this uv if we come over here to this where the triangle is you come down here uv maps okay i have one uv map i'm actually going to change the name and i'm going to call this uv map lines i'm going to have to tell it to use the uv map lines right now there's only one uv map but I'm gonna have more than one, and so we're gonna deal with that a bit. So we come back here, UV image editor. I'm gonna click the plus, and I'm gonna call this UV map text. Still got this here. I've got this one selected, and it's gonna go U, unwrap, and I have that. I'm gonna keep this part selected, not the other stuff. I'm gonna go UVs, export I'm gonna call this UV so I now have UV text I'm gonna create a new document here I'm gonna make it 1024 by 1024 I like to make it pink so I can see what's going on here not that pink is my favorite color, but never, nevertheless. Uh, import to stage, video text. Okay, and it's all lined up anyhow. So, I'm doing it in Flash, you can do this in GIMP. In case I hadn't said that yet. Okay, there's my UV area, okay? I'm gonna take my tool, side lab, and I'm gonna drop some text in, and I'm gonna put it right there for now okay and i know that that's roughly the upper left corner roughly get rid of my uvs file export image instead of lines i'm going to change this to say text in gimp if you wrote your text in gimp or if you didn't open text add the layer with the foreground color and drop it down file overwrite okay now we need to tell blender to put the text on here so we're going to go to the node editor all right so far we just have this and the lights okay we got our lines okay what we're going to do is in that Make sure everything's deselected. I'm gonna box select this stuff. Shift D, G, I'm gonna bring it down. And this one, I'm gonna switch over to, to text. There it is. Now, I wanna connect this to displacement. So I'm gonna add another node, converter, math, and it's set to add. I'm going to drop that in there and I'm going to connect this. Nothing's happening yet because we have to tell them which UV maps to use. There are two of them here. There's UV map lines and UV map text. So I'm going to click on this texture coordinate, which by the way, I said you can add these if you want. Well, at this point, we pretty much need them, right? 
uh, we were over here and I said just hit uh, control T or whatever anyways I'm gonna switch this shift s input and choose UV map and here I'm gonna choose lines this one shift s input UV map and this one I'm gonna choose text okay so we're getting somewhere we have some text it's upside down so now I'm gonna come over to the UV image editor I'm going to rotate this 180 and see if that has solved the problem. Okay, there's my text. Now you can do this a couple ways. You can go back and move the text here. Okay, or you can just move the UV window. UV, the selected UV stuff, I'm just going to do that. All right, cool. Now we've got some text here. Let's make it look a little bit better. Back in the node editor non-color data still I'm gonna change the position of these and now it starts to come out and that's a really nice look at effect in my in my opinion so let's go back here and add a couple other graphic elements this is where if you actually were a graphic artist it would help <laughs> unlike me uh, what am I doing I want this This is as best I can do. Okay, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to take one more. And I'm going to do this. And again, you can snap all these kind of things. And I'll shrink this down a little bit. And I'm going to rotate this like that. Put it right there. Pretty exciting little logo, isn't it? Okay, so now I'm going to file, export, again, let's do the same thing. And in GIMP we do the same stuff with, uh, with our layers. Not really layers, oh yeah, it's layers, two layers, wow. Done. Here we go. Okay. You can adjust all this if you want. Let's look through the camera. Let's just see what that looks like in rendered. I think those handles look a little, you know, narrow to me. But now it's just about having fun. The only problem is the UVs are stretched a little bit. And so you'll notice this is a rounded rectangle. And over here, they're quite square. So you're going to have trouble with rounded things. Like if you put a circle, it may look, look a little stretched. It's just the nature of, the, of this particular method and the way I'm doing it. So personally, I think I would make these a bit thicker. And I might even relook at these edges and try to decide if I think they're of relative equal you know, thickness. You can add um, whatever materials you want on here, but I mean that's the basic, the basic technique. And let me just see if I could, you know, do something about this. I'll just I'm just going to raise them up a little bit this way, and I'll raise this one up a little bit. And maybe I'll even make this one just a little wider, just to be different. Okay, all right. Quite a bit, uh, quite a bit different there. I may like them though. Yeah, I think I do. I really like the text. And I like the fact that it's not made of a billion polys you know it's got that nice kind of Photoshop drop shadow and you know beveled or embossed kind of look I'm not super crazy yet about the lines I think I would work on that with the node editor pulling those handles of the color ramp this way and that way until I got something that I really liked I would also work on the position of my lights 
again until I got something you know similar to this but you can see generally how uh, how I did it all right so anyways hope that's helpful